Uh, so I laugh about, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I kind of laugh about that with uh, Jonathan. Like one time I told him, you know why you get customers? Because you just really don't give an F, you know? And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, the way you talk, like, oh, well, you're going to save this. And like, it, like he doesn't care. So that's the opposite of commission breath. He does like, he didn't even know. I told him, I was like, you know, you do like the ultimate takeaway clothes. And he's like, you think I'm like, yeah, because you make them feel like they'll be dumb to go with someone else and not with you, the pro. And you don't really care because you have so many customers that you, whether you do it or not, I don't care. <laughs> so that makes them want it more. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. I think. And so I don't know Jonathan. Well, I, I literally, I think I had one, maybe two calls with him. One of them was an interview like this. And, uh, but I remember like the thing I just, what impressed me most was that he just had the systems in the game plan. Like he understands and looks at the big picture. Like this is how I get referrals. And that's why he probably has more referrals than he knows what to do with. Um, and then also, but like you said, it is true. Uh, when you start to have that mindset and you start to pitch in a way that uh, the customer doesn't necessarily feel like you need them. Um, if you pitch in that way, it is like, you're not a salesperson. You're just someone who's helping them make the decision. And at that point, it kind of takes the pressure off them. Cause a lot of times when people hear that or feel that pressure or, or smell that sales breath, they just like want to say no and get out of the situation as fast as possible. Yep. And so they don't even get the information that they need to make the decision. And it becomes, uh, just, uh, another sales pitch. And that is interesting though. I've never really thought about it, but that is true. I remember when I did that from my marketing agency, I remember when I started telling people, like, I'm not taking new clients. Uh, it was like, I got, I got more messages yes. than ever in my life. I was like, I don't do that anymore. No, leave me alone. And, uh, that it, it's just funny how that works. Cause it is like, you're, uh, you're taking it away from them yeah. when they know that you don't need them. It's just, I mean, it's the same thing with dating. I never had that issue because yes. I pretty much, I tricked my wife when I was like 15 years old. So I've had her, um, I, I tricked her a long time ago, but, uh, I mean, it's the same thing with dating is all the guys that are the people that don't like you, or at least pretend like they don't like you. Those are always the people that they seem to like the most. So. Yeah, that, I, that's so funny and interesting you said that because I've told that to people. It's like dating. The more you're out there like trying to get someone, so if you're data vomiting, people like solar, 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 they can read that. Just like in dating, if you're after someone, the minute you don't care and it's like, oh, whatever, they're like, oh, wait, but, you know, uh, let's go out. And then you're like, what? Like, it's because it's it's um, it's just like dating, actually. Well, we, what it, it's, it's like... Um... People want what they can't have. I'm sure there's a psychological term that if I was, you know, smarter, I would come up with, but or <laughs> I'd, I'd be able to reference right now. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's the same as like every, you want what you can't have. I mean, that's really, it's it FOMO. comes down to it. It's FOMO. It's, yeah, it's FOMO. It's fear of missing out, but it is also, I mean, it's, you, you don't want to miss out, but you also, when we can't have something, we want it. Like I see it with my three-year-old and I tell him, no, we can't do that. And what is all of a sudden he wants to do that more than anything else in the world. And it's just, it is human psychology mm -hmm. and it is interesting. Um, but when we kind of change the conversation rather than um, we're helping you to do this and we change it to, we're trying to see if you're going to be able to do this, yep. um, that it just is very, very powerful because uh, they, they want in. It is FOMO. That's why the the big companies, they don't say like, get solar, do this. They say, see if you qualify. Let's yeah. see, uh, you know, and then... I worked at a company just kind of this brought it up where the whole we had a script we had to memorize seven pages and we had to actually say this to people this was part of the script right they said oh you know well we don't know if you qualify and then the customer will say well doesn't everyone qualify guys knock my door all the time and I go, oh no the hardest part of my job is telling you know half of the people i meet with that they don't qualify and they go well why wouldn't i qualify well, your roof, your credit, the direction of the sun, shady, and you tell them like all these reasons. So then they're like, so how do I find out if you qualify? Well, I got to run your credit, make sure that passes. Then we're going to qualify your home. And then if everything looks good, I'm going to provide you with a final design. And then we move forward to permitting. So that was literally part of the close was like you, the FOMO was built right into this, this whole thing. And because you're the first person that they'll be like, well, why did the other guy tell me? Well, I don't know how thorough that person was, but you got to meet five criteria to go solar. So I don't know how they told you you qualified without even running the number or without even running your credit or looking at your roof.
And I'm like, so right now this is all theory. You know, I want you to go solar, but I can't tell you you will until we check off these boxes in order to see if you qualify. And I swear that closed so many more sales than just, it, it's a psychological thing, fear of missing out. Like yeah. why does my neighbor qualify and I don't? Let me qualify too. <laughs> exactly. Or what do I need to do so I can qualify? Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden they're like, they will literally them, like, oh, it's because, themselves. like, it's because your credit score is at 610. And, and then they're like, all of a sudden they're like the most important thing in their life. Let oh, me find I'll, figure out, I'll figure out how to get that like, out. I'll get a co-signer. Oh, my son could co-sign, right? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's bring them over. But it's like the minute you take away, it's this one of the strongest ways to close. And I don't do that as much now because it's a very intricate kind of technique and I do a lot of referral base. But when I was just doing straight three to five appointments a day for these companies, that was the, the way you got a deal was you took it away. You said you can't, you might not even qualify. How do I know, you know? Yeah, I will <laughs> say though, one thing that I have noticed with people that have success, once again, people that like, they find something that works and they just like, that's all they do. And that's an issue in itself. But I have seen people that have a lot of success with that. And like, well, like, we're just here to see if you qualify. And like, they, they pitch it that way. And, but then they end up getting uh, the signature. Oh, you qualify. And they scheduled the site survey, but they never actually went through with like the actual close. And there are a lot of people that do that. And they're like, oh yeah, you, those are the people that talk about how they close 10 deals, but then but then like six, half of them, six of them, six of them right. cancel and it's because they don't really understand what even happened. Yeah. Um, and so definitely you have to have the full equation, but I do that's agree. Like I mean, a it's, very, it's a, that's why I don't teach that to anyone. Cause it literally, after you do that and you take it away so hard, they qualify. You're like, Oh, congratulations. You do qualify. Cause they're like surprised sometimes, right? With their credit. Yeah. And then you go, now we just got to make sure your roof qualifies too. Are you excited? Like you're going to, and then you're going to stack back all the things that made them go solar. So like, this is awesome. You know, like you, now we know you qualified. Now we're just going to check the roof. I'll probably, if I feel like it's kind of a, a weak one, then I'm going to go back to the site survey as well. If not, you're going to follow up, follow up and be in constant contact and build that relationship after that hard close. So there's a, there's a science to it. You can't just do that because you'll get half cancellations, you know? Yeah. So well, I think it's like, like, it's almost like you're in the process, like you've made it to the point where it's a layup, but you still have mm -hmm. to lay it up. Like you still exactly. have to, you can't just stop at that point and pretend like the deal is closed because mm -hmm. you believe it's closed, but the customer doesn't feel like it's closed. Right. And they, next thing they know, there's someone coming for the site survey and they're checking up. And then at the site survey, they're probably expecting like, you know, like, okay, so did I, did my roof qualify? And then you're like, yeah, installations in two months. And they're like, oh, I never agreed to that really. Right. Um, and it just becomes a, uh, it, that's the thing is that you see a lot of people that, uh, sell the appointment or not necessarily the appointment, they sell the site, site survey, survey and they close the site survey as if it's a closed deal. And that's yep. an okay approach, but you have to make sure that you have the process after the site survey to right. like say, okay, like this is what we saw on the roof. Like here's everything. Here's all the information. This is like the, these are the most accurate numbers that we're going to be able to give you. So are you going to stick here or would you want to save money and make, make the switch now and whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, a, like I said, I'm not a sales guy, I'm a marketing guy, but the main yeah, thing I is like, do it you have way. to have the conversation then. My way is a little different. Like, oh, okay, so congratulations. Go. Like, this is awesome. You qualified your roof looks good. Like, that's awesome. Cause you're making them feel like they're qualifying for something that most people don't qualify for. Right. Or like a lot of people don't. So then you go like, okay, so next, now all we got to do is um, we're going to go ahead and take this. In a couple of days, I'll have a final design. It's going to probably look like this because now we measured it out. And then after that, we're going to go to permitting. Should be no more than like two to three weeks. And then once we got the permit, we're going to be here to install. I'll be here that day. I'll bring you some goodies and stuff. And maybe you have some recommendations on some of your neighbors or family members that you would like to save money also and i'll go ahead and give you a referral for those and we're basically just helping people switch to clean renewable energy at a lower cost like you have to make them feel warm and fuzzy like damn i'm doing this and i always well, no. tell them you're saving the planet you're helping the environment you're getting like you know what i well, no, what i love about that is your clothes is already moving into the referral process uh -huh. and it's a way of like i'm bypassing uh, you're the their expectation you're celebrating the event and all they have to do is say yes and everything else is going to just fall into place. So right. I love that. That's why people like you are uh, better than nerds like me who like to hide behind the computers. <laughs> um, but regardless, uh, I, I do think that's 
uh, very good because I think that's something that not enough people talk about is there are the reason that the cancellation rate is so high. One of the reasons why the cancellation rate is so high is because it is a longer process. And at any point, if the customer is unsure about what's going on in that process, yeah. that is when they start to think like, well, like, do I want this? Like, and that's, that's where all those cancellations come in is because it's not the same as a vacuum salesman who shows up at your door and you, you and get the pitch and you say, yes, they hand you the vacuum and you're like, Hey, um, <laughs> and even if I regret that vacuum two months down the line, I'm going to have a hard time trying to return it. Um, but if you, with solar, if they you give them that process and then you're not necessarily vocal about what the next steps are and they kind of, if any confusion, they're going to say no, and they're going to try to back out. And that's one of the things that we want to avoid. Is, and we can do that by communicating with them better. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Kyle Club. Thank you so much for watching this solar growth clip uh, from the solar growth podcast and my interviews with solar professionals. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. If you're watching this, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate every new subscriber I get. Um, and it helps me to uh, create more content and grow uh, myself in solar as well as help as many solar professionals grow um, in solar as well so that we can make this industry a, a much better industry um, that's going to have a much bigger impact. So thank you again for watching and uh, I'll, I'll see you again soon.